Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, this week's module is going to focus on timber harvesting systems. We are going to look specifically at some of the different types of machines that are used to, to harvest timber and we're going to look at some of the specific steps that, that are involved uh, when moving a tree from the woods to the landing onto a truck and to the mill. We're also going to look uh, specifically at some of the different conditions that may alter the type of harvesting system that we choose to utilize. Our harvesting systems are based on uh, the type of terrain, the type of wood that is to be harvested, and definitely the objectives of management. So that is, uh, that's what we're going to focus on this week. And so to begin, we're just going to put this in a little bit of perspective. Um, here in the United States, we are both the world's largest producer of forest products, and we are also the world's largest consumer. By far, we are the largest consumer of forest products. Um, on average, uh, each American consumes almost 750 pounds of paper products a year and 18 cubic feet of solid wood a year. And again, just to give you a little bit of a visual, this truck here in the bottom, the bottom right-hand corner of the slide isn't isn't a stand is not a standard uh, log truck. It almost looks like it's a, um, it's got like two tan you know two tandem loads on it. But if you could think of a standard standard log truck here carrying approximately 30 tons of wood, uh, you know one forestry class uh, here at H HCC, you know give or take on average will use that much paper while you are here just at HCC and so that's just a couple years um, one class it does not account for the amount of solid wood that each of you use but that's that's an awful lot uh, it's an awful lot of paper for sure and it's just uh, just should give you something to, to think about to start off another really important uh, reality that we need to consider is, as I mentioned, we are the largest consumer of forest products in the world, but at the end of the day we consume more than we produce, particularly uh, softwood lumber, uh, a lot of which comes comes out of our, uh, comes from our neighbors to the north in Canada. Um, in 2010 we consumed uh, 1.4 billion cubic feet more uh, than we produced. That's That's wood products total. Um, so that's the first thing. We we use more in this country than we actually produce in this country. Uh, something else we need to think about is that our domestic production in 2010 was roughly 4 billion cubic feet less than in 1990. Uh, this is mostly a result of uh, the reduction in the amount of softwood we harvest, uh, uh, particularly in the Pacific Northwest where the where the U.S. government, the U.S. Forest Service, owns a lot, you know, manages a lot of that land production on the, you know, on those, na on that national forest land base has been way down over the past couple decades, and so that, uh, you know, that leads to a couple questions. You know, we are producing more, we're producing less than we're consuming, and we're not producing nearly as much as we used to, and so the big question is, should we cut more? Should we use less? Uh, and I, th I think if if I were really pressed to give you an answer, it's it's probably both of those. I think we could definitely stand to consume less than we do uh, in this country, uh, but there is also room, particularly on national forest land, to to cut more than we do. So there is uh, there is a problem with the fact that we consume more than, than we produce. The, the biggest of which is that um, if you look at a country like China, a country that is exporting a ton of finished wood product materials that we, that we buy here in this country, um, a, a percentage of the wood that they're utilizing comes from unsustainable sources, uh, in particularly tropical rainforest systems that are, that are cut in unsustainable ways, right? In this class, we already talked about the, um, the differences between harvesting timber in tropical systems and harvesting timber in temperate systems like we have here. And so that what it amounts to is a, a global concern. Wood is a global commodity. It is a, a global resource. And when we get the, 
what it amounts to is by consuming more in this country than than what we we actually produce we're exporting our resource impact we're exporting our environmental impact somewhere else and in many cases this this has a um, a pretty you know it has a pretty significant ecological impact it also has a significant econ economic impact here in this country and so the the quote from Aldo Leopold on the bottom of this sums it up pretty nicely when we don't when we just use right when we're just consumers not aware of where this wood is coming from where this material is coming from um, that is a, a fundamental problem and we kind it kind of gets back into this belief that all of these resources are inexhaustible when we don't see the impact of our resource use when it's not necessarily right in our face then a lot of us operate under the assumption that what what we're doing is a sustainable thing and in in some cases it just isn't so now what we're going to get into are the the parts of a of a harvesting system how does a tree in the woods get from the woods to um, to the mill, right, where it's turned into a finished product. There are a few fundamental steps that are common to all harvesting systems. These, these steps occur in different ways depending on the system that's utilized, but these are the basic, basic steps that have to occur. The tree has to be cut in some way. The tree has to be delimbed. The limbs need to be cut off and the tree needs to be topped. Um, you know, we remove the unmerchantable material from the merchantable material. Typically the only thing that is leaving the woods is something that can be sold as a product. Once that tree is cut and delimbed um, and topped, it needs to be moved from the stump to the landing. Uh, the I, I, I alternate using the terms landing and deck. Um, you'll, 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 you'll find that mo most folks in the, the southeastern United States refer to it as the, as the deck. Um, but I, I tend to call it the landing. Um, the, so it needs to move from the stump to the landing and this occurs either by skidding, forwarding, yarding, or flying. And we'll go through those steps uh, in a little bit. The tree, once it's um, at some point in here, the tree needs to be bucked into merchantable lengths. Um, logs are sold in 16 foot increments typically. Uh, we, we, we think of a log as 16 feet. Um, those logs need to be loaded onto a truck somehow and then those once on the truck it needs to be hauled to the mill. So a question that we get into is which harvesting system is best um, of all of these which one is, which one is, is best to be u utilizing at all times and the more important question that, that you guys should get in the habit of asking yourselves when you get out there um, working in the woods is, is not which system is best, it's which system is most appropriate. I know it's kind of a, you know, it's not much of a difference, but, but what I'm trying to get at is the, the appropriateness of a system varies based on a lot of different considerations. And the, there's a whole spectrum of systems that we may utilize. On the left hand side of the slide is an image of Ian Snyder and he is a horse logger up in Watauga County. He lives just outside of Boone and Ian is a, a great woodsman. He is uh, he logs pretty much full time um, I believe when he's not farming and he skids with a team of horses. Uh, that's one end of the spectrum. It works really well in a lot of different situations but maybe not all situations and I think and he may be the first to tell you that. Um, on the right hand side of the slide you have um, an image of what's referred to as a cut to a mechanized cut to length harvesting system and so the machine you're looking at there is a, is referred to as a harvester with a processing head on it and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more th about that in a minute but it's the difference between um, uh, as manual a system as you get Ian cuts trees by hand with a chainsaw pulls them out with um, animal power and on the right hand side you've got fully mechanized you know there's a machine that cuts the tree there's a machine that limbs the tree it bucks the tree um, a machine pulls it out of the woods and, and puts it on the truck so 
Um, there's different reasons why you'd use one or the other. And a lot of times what it comes down to in terms of the quality of the job is the um, really how conscientious the logger is and how um, how professional the logger is. Now Ian is a great horseman. You wouldn't want somebody in the woods with a team of horses trying to pull logs out who has never driven a team of horses before. Just because that is the system that was chosen um, doesn't mean that the the skill of the logger is a negligible factor in there. Um, you can make a mess with a team of horses too if you don't really know what you're doing. And equally true is the um, is the picture on the right. If you have an equipment operator who's never operated that piece of machinery before, you can have a, a, a pretty big problem. And so just it, oftentimes it, it comes down not only to the system that's used, but how conscientious and how professional the logger is. So felling or, or cutting the tree is the first part of all of these different harvesting systems and it can happen uh, either manually or it can happen uh, mechanically. The, when I use the term manually, what I'm referring to is the cutting of a tree with a chainsaw. Um, it's, you know, a dangerous endeavor under the under the best conditions. Um, the other two methods, you know, and so the manual felling is likely what what comes to mind when people think of of how trees are cut and how loggers cut trees. But what is almost more common now, particularly in uh, parts of the state and parts of the country where you can operate equipment where it's not nearly as steep as it he is here in the southern Appalachians. Um, you have mechanical ways of, of felling trees. The first machine that we'll look at in a little bit is referred to as a feller buncher. Um, a feller buncher is a rubber tired machine. Um, it can also be a track mounted machine. And we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at images in a, in a minute. It'll make more sense. Um, the second type of mechanical felling can occur with what's referred to as a cut to length harvester. Um, which is what we saw in the, the previous slide. Uh, the difference between a feller buncher and a cut to length harvester is that a feller buncher cuts a tree and lays it down whole tree, right? There's no processing um, by the machine. A cut to length harvester not only cuts the tree, it severs it from the stump, but it also turns the tree over and cuts it to log lengths in the woods. And so we'll, we'll, we'll look closer at that in a second. This slide here is just just illustrates the different different ways that, that trees can be can be felled in the woods. The the first slide on the, the top left corner shows somebody who is in the process of manually felling a tree. Um, the portion of the cut on the right hand side of the picture is referred to as the face cut. That is the the direction the tree is falling. Um, the cut on the left hand side of the picture is referred to as the back cut that releases the tree and allows it to fall. Um, Commonly, commonly used here in the southern Appalachians, where you can't get these big pieces of machinery out in the woods to cut um, to cut trees because the terrain doesn't allow it. Uh, the next one over, moving moving clockwise, is a rubber tired feller buncher. So you have, um, and this is the green machine in the top right hand corner. Uh, you have basically a really large tractor with a cutting head on the front end of it. So that machine has to drive up to the tree. Um, there, this particular feller buncher has what amounts to a circular saw blade um, on the bottom of the cutting head. The top part of the cutting head holds on to the top of the tree um, or holds on to the tree further up the stem. That The machine drives up to the tree, that circular saw severs it from the stump, and that, uh, that cutting head can tilt. So it, it cuts the tree, holds on to it, and lays it down on the forest floor. Uh, if the trees are small enough, it can cut more than one tree at a time moving down uh, so the bottom right hand corner of the slide that is a tracked feller buncher so the cutting head again is really similar to the one above it you have a circular saw head with um, you know with a with an arm that can grab onto the the severed material and you can see that this particular machine is cut uh, you know three or four trees in one in, in one bunch right there and th it's just on tracks instead of wheels and so the machine cuts it, severs it from the stump, picks it up and places it uh, where it needs to go. The last picture on the bottom left hand corner is 
of a cut to length harvester. So this machine, the, the cutting head way out at the end of the boom, does a lot of different things. It severs the tree from the stump. It, there's a computer inboard in the, in the cab uh, that the log lengths are programmed into it. So the operator cuts the tree, spins the, spins the log over, or spins the tree over, limbs it, it runs it through that head and takes all the limbs off, and then it also bucks it to length. So instead of having a pile of trees that were just cut, you have a pile of 16-foot logs with no limbs on it. It is uh, uh, a fully mechanized thing. It's the, a fully mechanized cut-to-length system. Once the trees are felled, they need to be delimbed, right? There needs to be some sort of system that cuts the limbs off, and there needs to be something that cuts the tops off as well. And this can be accomplished in a few different ways. The most basic way, again, is it can be accomplished manually with a chainsaw at the stump. So if you think back to our logger who's cutting a tree by hand, he cuts the tree, it falls down, he takes the chainsaw, cuts the limbs off, cuts the tops off. That's the most basic way of looking at it. Um, it can also be accomplished mechanically with the cut to length harvester at the stump. So again, you have that harvester with the processing head. It cuts the tree, it runs the tree through the head, taking the limbs off, and then it cuts the tree into log lengths as it's moving through the head. Um, and again, that all happens at the stump. So those two, those two ways just described, those are, those are cut to length systems. It's all happening at the stump, whether it's manually or mechanically. Something that's really common, particularly down, uh, further down east, uh, I mean, it's also really common here in the western part of the state as well, um, is uh, whole tree systems where the whole tree, you know, the, a feller buncher cuts the tree and that whole thing is pulled out to the landing where it's delimbed by some other piece of machinery on the landing. Um, and there's two different types of uh, delimbing machines. There, there's a, a stroke delimmer and a pull-through delimmer, and we'll see, we'll see images of these in a second. These are all the ways that a tree is delimbed and topped. Uh, every way except the, the manual way that I think you guys all get. You know, there's, there's not a picture of the logger on here limiting, limiting it up and, and cutting the top off. Uh, but what we do have on the left hand side, the largest picture of the three, um, is what's referred to as a pull through delimmer. So that delimmer is set up on the landing. Again, the landing is where all these trees are coming out of the woods to be sorted and processed and loaded onto a truck the operator of the pull-through delimmer picks up the whole tree that was just dropped off by the skidder, pushes it, you know, places it on that gate, that orange gate that you can see kind of on the left-hand side of the picture, and actually pulls it through there, taking, you know, effectively taking the limbs off and taking the top off. The top right-hand picture is uh, what's referred to as a stroke delimmer. Again, it's a machine that is typically set up on the landing or on the deck. It picks up a whole tree that was just pulled out of the woods, and instead of pulling it through uh, a, f a stationary delimmer, the delimmer is actually moving. So it holds the tree in place, and that stroke delimmer kind of runs its way down the tree, uh, taking off the limbs, taking off the tops. The picture on the bottom right-hand side uh, of the slide is another image of a cut to length processing head. So that same machine that cut the tree from the stump is also running the tree through the head to take the to take the limbs off. So that's delimbing. So we've talked about how a tree gets cut in the woods. We talked about how the limbs and the tops make their way off the tree. The process of skidding refers to the process of dragging the severed tree from the stump to the landing with one end raised. That's, in, that's important. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's a couple different ways of moving a tree from the woods to the landing. Skidding implies that the butt end of the log is suspended and the top end of it is dragging along the ground. And so skidding can be accomplished with uh, a rubber-tired or track-mounted cable skidder, and we'll look at an image of that in a second. A rubber-tired grapple skidder, which we'll see in a second. 
Um, basically anything that can drag a tree can skid, so a farm tractor with a winch can act as a skidder, and just as we saw with uh, Ian's picture, uh, draft animals can skid. You can pull, dr pull logs out with horses, mule teams, or, or even teams of, of oxen. These are images of, of things that skid, right? So the top left-hand picture, um, the yellow machine in the top left hand is referred to as a grapple skidder. So it amounts to uh, a big tractor. And if you, can, if you look up on the back end of the machine is a grapple. You know, the, there's two arms that, uh, can, that are either that spread out and grapple around um, a pile of wood. So when typically these, these machines are used in tandem with a feller buncher, so you have a pile of cut trees in the woods, a grapple skidder backs up to the thing, the operator opens the grapple up, grapples up the, the pile of wood, suspends the butt ends in the air, and pulls the, um, and pulls the, the pile out. Moving to the right, um, we're looking at the back end of a cable skidder. And so a cable skidder is similar in that it's a big, it's essentially a big tractor. But instead of a grapple, you have a cable with a really uh, substantial winch. So you have chokers on the end of a cable that can that can secure uh, upwards of three logs typically, and the cable extends out. So it's a really it's a really great way to keep a machine on a designated skid trail. Um, you can drag the cable out to the tree and then cable it back to the machine with the winch and you basically drive the thing out of the woods. Uh, and again on the on the bottom left hand part of the slide is uh, another horse logging operation. A, a gentleman by the name of John Plowden who operates up in uh, the western part of Maine is just another example of somebody who skids with horses. The, the other two methods are, are, are more common. Uh, in particular, in the in the southeastern United States, the grapple skidder, kind of a, a, a high production machine, is most typically used.